All right, at 2017 Vrick here, I've got uh, Peter Spina, gold and silverseek.com, or silverseek.com, goldseek.com. Peter, good to see you. Great to be here, thank you. Uh, obvious question is a Trump presidency. Um, caught a lot of people off guard. Uh, what do you think it means to this particular space? Well, Trump has said that one of the biggest problems right now is that the stock market is the only game in town. He recognizes that there's a lot of debt, and he's coming into a situation where we're excess of $20 trillion in national debt and unfunded liabilities that are much larger. And for his method of dealing with that, he says that we need to have a weaker dollar. So he tried to talk down the dollar about a week ago. He, Janet Yellen talked to back up a couple of days later. So there's a bit of a uncertainty how that all plays out. But overall, his policy, I believe, is to have a cheaper dollar to, to ease the burden of all the debt out there. Uh, so that's a very positive for gold. Um, I think there's a lot of uncertainty with uh, what Trump will exactly do, uh, how the outcome of a potential trade war or these different trade renegotiations and things happen. And that uncertainty is good for gold as well. So I think that'll uh, create more of an interest in the precious metals. And uh, there, you know, there, overall, Trump is uh, come inheriting a very serious and very difficult problem that is uh, probably way beyond his ability to quickly to, to fully fix it, but we'll see. I think he's going to try to ease the burden of it by cheapening the debt with a weaker dollar. So that's good for us. Uh, agreed. Um, Dow 20,000, the Trump bump, three pr uh, proposed rate hikes. Do you believe any of it? Uh, you know, they're behind the curve in some ways, so they could raise rates. You know, if they, they get it to 1%, 1 1.5%, I don't think that's really a, a big problem. But I think once you start getting rates above 2 3%, if they really try to raise it much higher, then the debt is going to be so expensive to, to keep financing. They're, it's a catch-22. They can't raise rates and they can't really low, lower rates. And they've bought themselves time over these past cycles. And now it's like, what do you do? What's next? I don't, I don't know what they, what, what can you really do at this point? They keep, they keep doing the same thing. I don't think they, they really know what to do at this point. And they seem to think that all they can really do is buy themselves time. And uh, you know, they keep making the situation worse and worse, making uh, the problem unmanageable. So at some point, it's going to break. And I think Trump wants to get ahead of that and, and start, start addressing these issues. And he talks about America first and trying to strengthen the US economy. Uh, so we're not so dependent on so many foreign, um, you know, we're spending $50 billion a month on products that we can't afford. And we're importing $50 billion. We have a trade deficit of $50 billion a month, plus our internal deficits. It just is unmanageable. So they can't raise rates that much. They're, they're stuck. What do, you, what do you make of uh, the deregulation and uh, read this morning uh, going after NAFTA and uh, squashing the TPP? That ought to be good, good for business. It should be. I mean, America has exported its middle class to Asia. All the good jobs have been taken away from this, from the, I mean, a lot of the jobs have been taken away. So Trump talking about America first, in many ways, it makes sense. The, how, it's, not, it's not just about free trade, it's about fair trade. And I think a lot of this globalization has benefited a very few elite people, but the average, you know, the, the middle class has, has, been, has been gutted. I mean, the wealth of this country has been exported. So. You know, Trump and uh, there, there's some uncertainties how this plays out, but I think the U.S. and, and where we're at, I think uh, there's U.S. Is, uh, is looking a little more interesting right now, but there's problems that are much bigger than, you know, uh, that, are, that need to be addressed. And I don't know if Trump can really deal with all, all of them. Well, I always maintain the reason he was elected was uh, seven out of ten households don't have a thousand dollars in the bank to take care of an emergency bill. That's uh, that's pretty scary for a nation. It is. We're we're a nation living from paycheck to paycheck. We're living outside of our means, and it's just not the individual. It's the government. You know, they set a horrible example for everyone else, saying this is that you can, you know, spend more than you take in. So we need to change our values. We need to be a change the culture to savings, where we respect the money that we make, the resources that we produce, and not just mindlessly consume. So. But yeah, we're not rewarded for saving, so uh, I think we are completely pigeonholed. Absolutely. The 0% the rates, they encourage this mindless consumption. They create this speculation. But how do you get out of it? They've manipulated things so much at this point, there's going to be a severe price to pay. Somehow, it has to be paid. Hopefully, Trump will do the thing that no one else wants to do, which is to address this problem, because everyone wants to just delay it and make it someone else's problem. What do you, uh, what do you think, uh, if we're talking here in December, uh, metals significantly higher? 
I think so. I think the theme in, in the recent past is that the dollar is uh, muting the gold price run in the U.S. dollar terms. But if you look at gold and silver and foreign currency in the Canadian dollar, Japanese yen, the euro, they're looking really good. And I think they'll do better in the foreign currencies. I think the dollar, as far as paper currency goes, is only game in town. Uh, China has is having more and more issues. The euro just doesn't look so appealing. So the dollar relative to them, it could hold up. And so that could just mute some of the price rise this year in the in the gold price, but I, I, I could see gold running 13, 14, 1500 again this year. But there could be one more washout. You got to be careful because, you know, the JP Morgans of the year, the banks, they know how to wash out positions and uh, cover their shorts. But for the moment, um, it looks like gold is going to start rising steadily and we'll probably see a pretty good year ahead. Yeah. What, uh, one thing I wanted to ask you, um, what do you make of, uh, you think Rand Paul is going to have any juice with his uh, audit the Fed bill and will that... Uh, Will that open the Pandora's box of gold potentially? Yeah, that's that's a oh boy. What will Trump do with Federal Reserve? Uh, I think he'll he'll get more control. But you know, he, he's surrounding himself with some individuals from you know ex Goldman Sachs guys, and and, and they're the ones uh, that have the true power. So how is he going to deal with that? I I don't know. I, he seems like he wants to audit and do some, you know do something there, but the same time maybe not right away maybe he needs to uh delay some of those issues but uh that's i i really i'm not sure where he you know he, he has said some things and the people that he associates with and says uh, talks with and they're they want to audit the fed they want to they should put ron paul ahead of the federal reserve and, and see what happens uh, uh, preaching the choir on that uh, how can uh, besides the websites how can people follow your work so uh, I contribute to a weekly newsletter with uh, Julian Phillips out of South Africa. So we do a weekly gold silver forecaster, the goldforecaster.com. Um, I'm on Twitter, GoldSeek on Twitter, and uh, on the websites and come to shows like this Cambridge House show. Peter Spina, goldseek.com. Thanks for your time. Thank you.